Hello and welcome to the channel. If you're new here and you don't know my face, my name is Stephanie Jean and this is my channel where I like to talk about stuff on the internet. Today is a spilling the tea video <laughs> and I'm joined by... Jonah Dewey. I'm Jonah. Do I say the whole name? I'm Jonah. It's <laughs> whoever you want. Jonah, yes. Jonah. <laughs> so, spilling the tea, for those of you who don't know what that is, um, it's basically a tipsy talk where we're going to talk about something and consume some alcohol content. Yeah. We're going to create content while consuming alcohol content. So does that make yeah. this video alcohol content? Y yeah, it makes it... Alcoholic content. <laughs> ab above the legal limit, at least. It's, yeah. Uh, uh, also, if you hear random noises, it's the cat and dog being obnoxious because they don't want to be excluded. Yeah. What are we talking about today? Talking about theater shit. Talking about theater things. Yes. Sorority sister drinks. Mango flavored vodka with pineapple and tropical flavors. So it's mango and pineapple tropical flavored vodka. <laughs> Yoink, how much do you want? Uh, well that one's your shot glass, so... Um, how much do you want? Not Say when. That, yeah. Connor. Connor. <laughs> okay. Sante. Whatever that means. <laughs> Sorry, did you want one? Only if you're... Can I see your ID? Can I see your ID? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, at last a big day came. I made my claim. We're gonna talk about different things in theater. Let's talk... Let's start at the beginning. How did you start in theater? So, I started in dancing. It was... Do you like dancing? I like dancing, but I was always put in <laughs> acting roles. I can't dance. <laughs> My sister was a ballerina, and one of my earliest memories is sitting in the audience with my mom during like a dress rehearsal or something. Mm -hmm. It's the party scene on stage during the Nutcracker. Uh huh. And I was just like, hey, I want to do that. So in the following <laughs> hey, years, <laughs> yeah. And I was an annoying little brother, and so I was naturally put as Fritz after a while, which is the Obviously, annoying little brother. Yeah. And so at that point, I understood acting in some weird abstract way, because I was like, I am the character, I didn't have to play anything. Yeah. And so I think I've just done that ever since. And I also kind of feel like I started in that silent movie type of <laughs> situation. So I yeah, because to... it's ballet. Yeah. It's very silent filmish. Yeah. And I broke all the rules of dance anyway, I didn't like... I was really, <laughs> I was falling all over the place and like, being obnoxious and I don't know. Um, How did you start in theater? I didn't start theater until high school. Before that, it was choir and cheerleading, and before that, it was just orchestra. Okay. So, I always loved being on stage. I always loved the idea of creating something and putting it out there. Um, but yeah, I started in high school with Shakespeare. I didn't know about community theater being a thing until I graduated from high school. Yeah. Like, we have a very, like, thriving community theater, uh, community <laughs> in Bakersfield, which is where I'm from. But I don't know what it was. I don't know if it's just because, like, we were super low funded, um, that we didn't have time to talk about anything other than what we were immediately doing at the time. I don't know if it's because we were, like, on the outskirts of town and my parents just don't like theater. So I don't know. I didn't know about it. Yeah. I didn't know anything. I thought high school was as good as it got in Bakersfield. Just so not true. <laughs> There's yeah. so much more out there. Did you guys ever have any like touring companies go through Bakersfield or anything? I don't know Bakersfield at um, all. Um, we did. We had an off, off, I think it's only two offs of Broadway. <laughs> I don't know how the off system works. Two offs and a half. <laughs> two and a half offs. It was, it was, it was definitely not on. <laughs> It was off, but not like a double negative. That might be off. better. <laughs> considering, um, so but it was, uh, it was Mamma Mia, actually. Oh wow! And they they came through uh, the Robert Blank Arena in Bakersfield, and I saw that for my thirteenth birthday. Yeah. Um, and you know we were up in the nosebleeds. I had binoculars. It was so cool. <laughs> Were you with your, and you were with your parents, you were yeah. 13. How did yeah. your parents, uh, do you, can we talk about parents? Yeah, we can talk about parents. How did your parents respond to Mamma Mia? Um, so my mom is a valley girl from the 80s. So, so she, she likes ABBA. She loves ABBA. Like, yeah, I grew okay. up right. listening to ABBA on every road trip. Yeah. Um, my dad is kind of, I don't really 
remember how re he reacted to it. I think he was just like, yeah, that was a show. He probably wasn't listening. He was like, fuck. <laughs> he probably fell asleep. You know, I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the cringiest thing you've ever seen as an audience member Ooh. or had to do as an actor. Uh, yeah, we'll go high school. My freshman year, we did a funny thing happen on the way to the forum. Mm. And that's... that's a Strange show to do for a high school. <laughs> yeah, no, it was really weird. <laughs> there's a lot of prostitutes and a lot of ass waving and a lot of things that you're like, should should we be doing this? Yeah. But as high school kids, you're you're like, yeah, we should be doing this. Yeah, I wish that I could say that we just didn't have good dancers or that we didn't, but we just didn't have good anything. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have good directing. We didn't have good actors. We didn't have singers. It was just high school. But with really inappropriate content, and a lot of kids who like to go off script, and uh, Yikes. and also kids who like to pull pranks on each other constantly. It was that group of people. If you know me close, and we've talked about theater, you probably heard this. But I was I was backstage, and I had a girlfriend at the time. Her name was Sophie, and uh, I, I thought I was done with Act One. And I was like. Fuck, yeah, I'm done. And I went backstage, <laughs> and I went to the blue room where my girlfriend was. She wasn't in the show, mm -hmm. but she was in the drama department. And we're sitting in the blue room, and she's reading Robert Frost. And the blue room wasn't our green room. It was kind of a loft and had a sex couch, as people call it. Oh, uh, yes, our sex <laughs> couch was in the girls' dressing room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think every yeah. high school theater has a sex couch. Has a sex couch. Every high school theater. Uh, so we're sitting on that couch, and I'm like... <laughs> looking over her shoulder, looking at Robert Frost, and I'm like... Right, that's what you're looking at. That's dirty. <laughs> <laughs> and Robert Frost isn't dirty. It's not. But at that time, I could make anything dirty. And she's like, fuck you, it's not dirty. <laughs> it's shut up. And I'm like, no. And so I start reading Robert Frost in a really, really sexed up, sensual way. And uh, I don't even remember what poems or anything. I didn't know that I had another scene. <laughs> Oh, I didn't no. know I was missing my scene, and the text really hated- there was like a divide between our text and our actors, mm -hmm. and so they were just like, fuck it, boosted my mic, and so the actors are on stage, <laughs> and you can't really totally hear me, you just hear like a sexual situation, Yay. and everyone's <laughs> like, what is happening, and how do we fix it? And people, like, they're improvising on stage, which is natural for the show. The audience has no idea what's going on. My mom right. and sister and probably some other people are in the audience. And I, I'm just going at it. And maybe five or ten minutes pass before I hear, like, Jonah in the hallway. And then I was like, oh, shit. And I run out on stage and I have no idea what's happening. So that was pretty cringeworthy. Nice. It was, especially, I was 14. <laughs> it wasn't great. It wasn't the best. So, moral of the story, don't read Robert Frost sexually. That's it. That's yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Not, that, not yeah. know your accuser or anything. Just yeah. don't read Robert Frost Fuck sexually. Fuck the through line of action. I blame Robert Frost. <laughs> it's your turn. Um, so the cringiest is also high school. Yeah. Just because, like, I haven't done anything, like, since high school that has been super cringy. Like, everything after high school has been pretty pretty solid um not not on my end anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh so it was my senior year we were doing the shakespeare festival at uh, my high school it was like a inter district each school had like a shakespeare team and so i was doing romeo and juliet for my shakespeare scene because i was like you know this is my last year and i haven't done this one and feel like I need to have played yeah, Juliet yeah. at least once yeah. in my life so I was doing Romeo and Juliet and my director had this really strange concept what was your concept um so it's hard to conceptual I mean besides <laughs> like bloods and crips it's hard to <laughs> <laughs> so um feuding families right feuding countries Israel Palestine <laughs> yeah <laughs> and an American soldier Except, um, oh, no. I'm very clearly white. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> and my Romeo was Hispanic. And he was the American soldier. Okay. I mean... <laughs> so I had to go through rehearsals with an accent that I didn't know how to do. 
and that's not even the worst part. Honestly, this whole scene was cringy, okay? Because the guy who played Romeo had broken two of my friend's hearts in this terrible love triangle. What a Romeo. Um, was currently dating this one girl who already had like been in and out of juvie and like was threatening to beat me up. Rosalind, yeah. <laughs> well, she was starting to beat me up yeah. because, like, the scene, it was the morning after scene. Agreed. So we were kissing a lot. Yeah. And it was just like, honestly, the scene's like five minutes long. It's like, it I don't want to have to figure out how to do all these freaking stage kisses. Like, we're just, yeah. we're going to kiss. It's going to be fine. It's not going to be a big deal. But the worst part is that he had to fake nuzzle on my ear. And I had to be, like, aroused by it. Who wouldn't be? I would be an American soldier. <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember the performance of it because we would do like a Shakespeare preview before the competition where it gave everybody a chance to just perform their pieces for an audience, for family members or anything if they wanted to see it. Um, so for the preview, we're doing the scene and I can hear my mother gasp two rows back on the left. I heard her go, Mamma Mia, <laughs> here we go again. <laughs> as soon as, like, as soon as the scene started, Ugh. and because, like, it started, like, we're laying down on the floor, like, you don't see me at first. Yeah. And he sits up, and then I sit up, and my mom, and I was just like, oh, no, I didn't hear that, I didn't hear that, I didn't hear that. That whole scene was just the worst thing I had to do Spent as an actor. disbelief. <laughs> worst thing I had to do. And when we did the competition, like, walking into the contest, we were like, yeah, I'm not doing the fucking accent. Thank you. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Mama! <laughs> Do you want some of this? No! <laughs> oh, shit! Okay. I love it when you die! I love it when I die. I'm grasping for life. Uh, <laughs> uh, woo! Okay. Alright, next topic. Next topic, next prompt. Oh, the cringiest <laughs> thing you've seen as an audience member. Ooh, uh. Hmm. I've walked out of a lot of shows. Have you? Yeah. I've never walked out of a show. But, I, I mean, it was I always hope it gets better in the second half. <laughs> in the 18 to 21, like those years of my life, mm -hmm. I hated everything anyways. So it took a lot to keep me seated in one place for a long time anyways. Okay. So if you were putting on a show and I hated it, I was just going to leave. <laughs> so I should just do the one that comes to mind, but I saw a noises off. Okay. Which is a good show, a really yes. good show. The best production I've seen was a community theater production of it, and it was our theater, the Star Theater, Oceanside. Check out Star Theater and Oceanside. It's right next to the pier. And that we're doing be newsies prompt. soon. Yes, we are. <laughs> we should talk a little bit about the Star, and then we got to it. That'll be next. Yes. Um, so I saw the Star version, and I knew, like, they, they found the characterizations... Per, they they knew the spine of the show like I don't know what it was just sometimes they just hit the nail on the fucking head <laughs> it was like they did it with that one and so I was I I didn't know you could really do that show wrong based on the stars production and I went and saw this production and there was no characterization it was all choreography was yeah. it more slapstick than Lend Me a Tenor was oh yeah no Ooh. no 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 it was. It wasn't... Because Lend Me a Tenor's got some issues. Yeah, yes, it does. Yeah. As a script, <laughs> scripturally, it has issues. And then, on top of that, the performance wasn't bad. No, I feel no. like the actors did a very good job. He casted perfectly. Yes. It's dated. It's, yeah. It no, didn't age yeah. well. No, well, because if you take out, because blackface is no longer funny. It's if never we were really talking funny. about <laughs> Yeah, we were talking about Robert Downey Jr. earlier, and mm -hmm. how he was satirizing people who think blackface is okay he mm -hmm. wasn't satirizing blackface but the fact that people think he was doing blackface just to do blackface yes yeah which is not it yeah. and then i i get like it was rewrote to be rewritten to be a um a clown but like Pagliacci. but those jokes don't hold up because our audience... clowns aren't attractive like <laughs> i think it more had to do with fame and that it was like that could have been like you know originally it's othello and the greatest mm -hmm. actor yeah so like the greatest opera tenor oh i guess it's othello the opera right yeah Isn't that the... okay so like the most famous opera singer so it's kind of supposed to be around the concept of fame anyways i guess mm -hmm. as a spine 
I'm not sure. I haven't actually read the script. I just right. saw our production. Yeah. But our audience doesn't know. Our audience are like commu- is a community. It's not theater experts. It's not anything like that. It it is people. It is regular people who mm-hmm. didn't go to school for theater. And sometimes tourists because sometimes it's tourists. right next to the beach. Yeah. Yeah. And. And like the Oceanside center of everything, we're next to City Hall. It's, yeah. it's just like a hub. Hubbub. Hubbub. Shit. I know, come here, flirt with me. I love you. Damn it. So our, our audience doesn't know opera. Our audience doesn't like get yeah. the Pagliacci jokes. And, yeah, it's like, just a clown. It's just a weird clown. And the, like, Delivery. He mm-hmm. he. The directing was the best part, which was David. Yeah. That's the only reason it really got laughs. Yeah. The script wasn't funny doing. The script's not funny, but the cast was great. The direction was great, but yeah. the script is trash. Yeah. So. Uh uh-uh, uh. You don't get vodka. So... She no, wants the vodka. The water. She wants vodka. <laughs> she wants to be in our sorority. You're not in our sorority. You're not. Okay. Maybe you can be. <laughs> you win. <laughs> in general, it was just. The cringiest show. It was just a cringy show. Ooh, I know how to put it. Okay. I figured it out. So the show can't be presentational because it goes between backstage and on stage. So I actually have the same complaint about the cringiest show I've ever seen, which was Singing in the Rain. If you know Singing in the Rain, it's about how you go from silent film to a not silent film, or the talkies, right? Mm-hmm. So you don't have to be as presentational because you're actually able to speak. You don't have to go, yeah. and then a title card comes up saying, oh no. Yeah. You could just go, oh no, yeah. and it gets the message across exactly the same. Yeah. Well, uh, so the guy that they cast to be the lead in that is the most presentational actor I've ever seen ever. You are screwing up my life. <laughs> You're just like all of my ex-girlfriends. I love you so much, and I'm going to keep coming back to you. <laughs> this is realism at its finest. <laughs> She just wants to be a camera whore. She does. There. See, she looked right into the lens. <laughs> yeah. She even forgot her objective. She's like, ooh, my close-up. <laughs> I don't know where to put you. Finish my water so you can't have none. Oh, how did we get introduced to the start? You've told me your story, and it's, I love you, but it's not that interesting, but you should still tell it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's, long road how you got there, so maybe you can tell not, the road getting there. It's not really a long road. I mean, I moved down here from Bakersfield. But they don't know it. Because my husband's in the Marine Corps, yeah. Yeah. Um, and he got deployed, and I was lonely and bored, so I wanted to get involved in theater again, so I called a bunch of different theater companies. Oh, okay. I thought you just saw an ad. Okay. No, so my, no. Okay. I called a bunch of different theater companies, and none of them called me back except for the star, and yeah. Paul was like, hey, we... Might be doing an internship program. I don't really know what we're doing, but yeah. we're looking for somebody uh, to help Paul's us out. Paul's our supervisor. Yeah, he's the general manager of the theater. And then David is the artistic director. Um, I call them the theater dads. Uh, so I went in to meet with Paul to talk about volunteering, and then he told me that they were hiring for a theater tech. And I was like, oh, well, I mean, I was going to do it for free, but if you're going to pay me, that would be amazing. Love a theater. I didn't always work there, because I got there when I was a kid, which mm-hmm. is how I got introduced to theater. So I was a dancer first, but I grew up watching movies. Mm-hmm. I didn't really know much about theater. I only knew about <laughs> dance. I didn't really know there was a whole thing where you could just do acting. Yeah. I was just underexposed, and we come from Hicks, <laughs> and, you know, not classically cultured, but people who go out of their way to be cultured, <laughs> like this cat. Like this cat who wants to drink. She really wants my water. She wants the fruit of knowledge. <laughs> she just wants to drink out of a teacup. She wants uh, that. F- Audrey Hepburn <laughs> in a past life. Full circle. I get you. I know what you want. Yeah, see, you know. I know you. Are you an Audrey? You. She's an Audrey. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> so weird. I love cats. <laughs> they love me. And so I, I, I always wanted to be an actor because I liked movies, period. I got into dance. I thought that was the best way to do it because I didn't know anything. And then I saw auditions for 
Aladdin the Musical. I was literally driving on Coast Highway, so I went to Jefferson Middle School, which is on Oceanside Boulevard? Question mark? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't it's, know where the schools are around here. It was pretty ghetto. They put barbed wire on the fence after I graduated. I saw this auditions. This America. <laughs> yeah. And I literally just told my mom, I want to audition for that. I went home and practiced one jump. I, I steal, steal only, only what I, what I, I can't, can't afford. afford. And that's, that's everything. everything. <laughs> Celine! <laughs> your butt in my cup. Little butt cup. And then you auditioned for Aladdin. And I got Aladdin. Hey. And then... <laughs> that was terrible. Celine's <laughs> 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 just like cups of water. <laughs> just drink from the source. Come on. You have a water bowl. She just wants what's ours. I didn't have any sense of like self confidence before that. Mm -hmm. Like theater is what gave me any sense of confidence. I didn't yeah. have any. I was a long hair like. I, I was a skater kid and I couldn't even skate. Like, he was a skater boy. <laughs> she said, see you later, boy. <laughs> and so theater was life-changing for me. It's why I hold on to it. I can't, like... Me too. Yeah. It, it sounds weird, but, like, putting on characters and being somebody else helped me find myself. And that is the most... Yeah. Pretentious, hippie, bullshitty sentence I've ever said in my life. I didn't know anything about the world before theater. I also feel like it taught me everything I know. Yeah. I mean, there's so uh, all. You want to be non-homophobic, non-transphobic, not uh, not a racist, not but a an anti-racist. Um, do theater. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You want to be right. a good human? Do theater. Do theater. And this is why this chair's normally over there, so she can't get up there. That's gonna be it for this video. <laughs> As always, you can connect with me online at p underscore stephanie jean and. Jonah Due. It's that's. I don't have like a cool name. It's just my name, Jonah, J O N A H. <laughs> I'll link it. I'll link yeah, it okay. down below. And you have a YouTube channel that will also link up in one of these corners. I never know which one. And that's what I mean. Yeah. I don't use Instagram anymore. Yeah. Because yeah. he's a little bit of a hermit, but we still love him. Yeah. So, yeah. Any closing statements? Change is important. Yes. I think we're doing good. Yeah. Do more theater. The yeah. end. The end. All right. I'll see you in another June 2 video tomorrow. Bye. That's it. I have no personality. <laughs>